You oh, never intended to be in front of the camera. Not at all. No, no. A series of random and hopefully happy accidents led me to your sofa. So how did it happen then? How did you end up on the telly? Well, like you and lots of other people, I don't think anybody's just sort of one thing. It turns out, you know, I can do some jazz hands these days as well. And I used to write scripts in addition to doing really serious cases. Um, and I was trying to sell one and the lady I was selling it to, I think for this channel, sort of was giving me her sort of undivided indifference, you know. And um, I then wrote to her and she said, well, I'm not really interested in that, but why don't you think about doing this? And then she just put it on telly. The lovely, brilliant Helen Warner. That, that's our what happened. Boss. Your boss, our yes, boss. our boss, yes. in fact, yeah. And how, uh, how realistic is it to sort of the, the real sort of court of law? Do you know, it is, I mean, it looks a little bit different, but it is completely realistic. And I feel really passionate about that to tell people when they come and watch the programme and anybody watching today at two o'clock that all of the cases are 100% authentic. And it's realistic insofar as loads of cases that end up in the small claims court in this country are about all of these things, especially the broad number of cases we deal with on the show in this series. So neighbour disputes, cases about animals, everything. If you've ever had any kind of civil issue, we deal with it. And we deal with it in a reel and sometimes, as you saw there, from time to time in a fun way. Do you have to kind of really... Uh, because if you sort of like someone mm -hmm. more than the other person, but you know that they're, you, can't, you just can't... I don't know. No, it doesn't work like that. I genuinely, I don't have any opinion until I see what they say in front of me. Certainly, when you read the cases beforehand, you have a definite opinion. But you know what happens from time to time? You've probably had this experience too on the sofa. You have a definite view about what somebody's going to say, and then you meet them and you hear the evidence and your mind absolutely changes. Genuinely, when I sit down, I'm never thinking, what would Judge Rinder say in that way? I'm thinking, what is the justice of the case? And very often, it only emerges when they stand up and start speaking. Yeah. You never really find out who the bigger moron is until they open their mouth. <laughs> Um, what's your favourite case? Have you got one that stands out that you love? Oh, there are innumerable. There are the funny ones, there are the serious ones. The cases I'm proud of are very often where families come and, you know, it's a dispute over money, but there's so much more going on. I was listening to some of the things that were on the show this morning and it's about so many different things and they get to hear each other, not listen, hear each other for the first time. Mm. And sometimes they shake hands when they leave court. Those are oh, great. Really? Of course, there are the funny ones. I dealt with a case last series, which a number of viewers would have seen, about a band and a lime green man keenly. Oh, yes. ah! Are you still in the real court? Yeah, I still do. Um, I just do some law when I find time. These days, you know, there's not much time to deal with sort of international law when you're doing the cha-cha with Oksana. <laughs> yeah, so how do you separate, or how mm. do the people in the court separate the man they know mm. on the telly Yeah. Um, and now the man they know on That's a really good question. Now, naturally, I don't do jury trials anymore for, for that reason. But I can still advise on cases. And um, it's important that I do it, largely because I keep my hand in, but also because, you know, the programme, which people love and I'm proud to do, relies on me being, you know, uh, having a real and retaining a real interest in the mm. law. Mm. And it's the authenticity of the show, as well as it being fun, which I think people have really responded to. Um, so you mentioned Strictly mm. just there. And uh, you're, you, I mean, this is quite incredible. Week one, mm. the clip of you dancing mm. turned out to be the most watched clip on Strictly Ever. Can anything. I ask you... Mm. Uh, you can ask me anything. I might not answer, Phil, but you can right. ask me anything. Well, in which you case, I'd like you to tell me what Bob Fock is. Oh, yes. Well, you say... <laughs> I, I don't... <laughs> you can, I can hear Ryland, you <laughs> see, laughing over there, like a mildly crazed aunt. Yeah, that's our Ryland. Is that right? Well, um, I saw some... I don't read Twitter. Apart from when people write nasty things, I sometimes write back and, create, and, and correct the spelling. <laughs> yes. I sometimes do that. But somebody posted Bob Fox, and uh, apparently I asked it what it was. It means, it means body of Baywatch, face of crime watch. Ah, oh, <laughs> that's so that sounds mean. Fair. Oh, who cares if people are mean? I don't know the person. <laughs> What's you know? your... Because you said that the, mm. um, the training is brutal. Um, it really is. But, but I would have thought absolutely fine to do Strictly and concentrate on that mm -hmm. until you are having to get into the studio and record a new series of Render. And you put the two together, yeah. that's brilliant. Well, I'm really glad you say that. Genuinely, um, that's quite demanding. So 
as I say, the cases on Judge Rinder are completely real. So they're shortened down by the time you see them on television. They sometimes last an hour, an hour and a half, especially with the more difficult ones. This series, we're dealing with cases involving builder disputes, and they're very serious for people mm. who come along. And I take them 100% seriously. So a filming can last a very long time, between six and eight to ten sometimes cases in a day. And we're filming this week, which means I'm only going to have, realistically, a day and a half to rehearse. And, you know, frankly, I don't want to get it wrong. I'm terribly nervous, but I'm also mildly nervous about upsetting my dance partner, Oksana. Oh. She's quite strict, isn't she? She's the only person I've ever met who is more terrifying than, than me, to be honest <laughs> with you. She's very gorgeous, though. Look at Because she's new this year, isn't she? She is new. But don't, you know, don't let that pretty face, you know, she, it masks a sort of a, a, a looming sense of... Ukrainian threat. <laughs> Craig will love it insofar as he can express any 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 facial emotion these days. I think he'll really enjoy it. You are a brave man saying that. Can I just say? Well, do you, are you, are you hmm. do you get sort of nervous about what the judges are going to say? No, about you? I mean I give. I sp no, I do care when they provide really helpful and constructive advice, like Darcy yeah. uh, and 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 Len and Bruno. That's helpful. But poor Craig. Do you know what I mean? He just doesn't like to see people having a good time, as far as I can gather, and I can understand why. It must be challenging for him. Oh, mm. I love it. <laughs> just, just love it. For more of the same, just click here. And they had nightmares for like two weeks because of this stupid <laughs> flying vampire kid who delivers pizzas. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's, it went so wrong. Put them off pizza for a while, though. <laughs> it went, no, it just put them off the X Files for the rest of their life. <laughs>